Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at Adobe Animate and how to bring assets from Adobe Animate into Zim. So let's go to Adobe Animate now. Of course, many of us came from, well, a Flash background, and so we may have used Animate for quite some time, or Flash for quite some time. Um, I'd like to draw vector assets with you in Animate and then bring them into Zim. We've done videos on that before, but Animate has changed slightly. So I'm going to make a new canvas right here and we'll see what those changes are. There's also Zim Shim. If you want to continue to work in Animate, actually code in Animate, then have a look at Zim Shim. Uh, it's in the code section and that uh, brings in a Zim frame for you and you can use Zim components etc right in Animate. Uh, you would probably use that if you're doing a lot of movie clip work but most of the time I just work in Zim and not in Animate and then if we want some assets we can bring them in and uh, like we're going to show you here. So uh, these are vector assets that we're working with so let's draw one. We'll um, well, have I got a white fill? I do have a white fill. Look at that. I don't want a white fill. Uh, so let's pick a different color fill. There we go. And I'm going to say no line as well. Uh, nope. The stroke can be added easily afterwards and strokes just kind of get in the way. If, if I were uh, picking this up, for instance, the stroke would have been left unless I double click it and then pick it up. So we can easily add strokes in afterwards. Now this is Animate. If you haven't uh, used Animate before, it's pretty cool. Look at that. We're going to make a windy rectangle. Uh, like how, oh yes, look at that. Isn't that cool? So there's a windy rectangle, we'll call that. And we also have pen tools. So we could pick up the pen tool and add, uh, there's different types here. You can add, it's sort of like Illustrator add points. And you can manipulate points with this, this one right here, the sub selection tool and there's your Beziers. Uh, so, uh, right? Okay. Um, now I even liked drawing in Flash better than drawing in Illustrator back in the day when I was doing a lot of Flash work. So that's great. Uh, what I'd like to do in this Explorer as well is once we're done here importing this from, or well exporting it from animate into into Zim, I would like to show you how we could make this windy rectangle with Zim, just using a blob as well. Um, all right, so try to remind me about that. But anyway, there's our windy rectangle. Fine. Now, if we were to export this, it would uh, look like this. We go Control Enter, Control Enter like that, or Publish. So we're, sorry, not exporting, we're publishing. And there it is out as an HTML page. So let's have a look and see what this exported for us. So I did a control enter or a publish um, from a menu somewhere would also do it. So I'm gonna scroll up under animate here. This is the animate folder. And we've got, oh, well, we didn't save it. So that's one of the first things you need to do is file save as or save this somewhere and we'll call it uh, shape test or something. All right, so there's our shape test. And now we'll publish it again. Because uh, without saving it, it publishes it to a, a temporary folder somewhere. All right, let's have a look. Shape test, was it? Yeah, there it is. So here's the HTML page. You don't need anything in the HTML page. And there's the FLA and here's the JS file. So this is where we would normally come is to the JS file to find our code. But in the latest version of Animate, maybe even the, the version before, the default is this Atlas thing, which is uh, basically it turns it into a PNG. So there it is right there shape test.png in an images folder. So it makes an images folder for you and shape test. Okay. So that's a PNG and we, if we're wanting to work with the vectors, 
then uh, that is not the vectors, that's a PNG. So we have to figure out how to turn that off. Uh, let's try. We come back into Flash here and make sure that you're on the stage. So if you're, if you're selected here, you can't see what we need. So make sure you click on the stage. You want more settings right here. So we're opening up more settings when we're on the stage. Under export image assets, leave that checked. But instead of texture, which is a texture atlas, turning it into PNGs so that perhaps mobile might uh, perform better if there's a lot of them, for instance, maybe that was Adobe's reasoning. Uh, I think these days that mobile is getting faster and faster and should be able to handle vector, but they, they decided to to set that automatically to make PNGs out of those. But if you choose image assets, which is pretty confusing because <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> well, what's the difference there? <laughs> uh, but if you choose image assets, then it won't make a PNG for you. <laughs> so this is why we're doing this explore is you might not think of that. And uh, therefore we can publish it. So we've now published it with image assets rather than texture. Close that down, I'll come back here, and we'll find our file again. What was it called again? Shape.js. And now you'll see that it makes a shape with a graphics, with a fill, and there's where we can add the stroke. So it doesn't really, you know, we can just easily put a color in there and add a .ss if we need to. And here is this code right there. That code is that shape. And you can make as many shapes as you want there, and you'll see them all. They'll all kind of, kind of come into here. You can make as many shapes as you want. You can put them on different layers if you want. Uh, I wouldn't put them on different frames. This isn't uh, like a movie clip with you know many things going across frames. But well, I suppose you could put them on different frames if you really wanted to. You just have to hunt around in here for different frames. So uh, there it is. That's what we need right here. Well, uh, we've also got to copy a template. So let's uh, open up a template and zoom. So file, new file, file, save. And we will save this in animate. And we will call it uh, zim, an zim shape, zim shape dot HTML. And we get a template. I can, well, we'll go out and get a template. I, I have a little hot key to get a template. But on the Zim site here, zimjs.com, press code to find the template and copy the minimal template here and paste. So there's our minimal template. We're bringing in Zim. For some reason, Adam at the moment isn't properly syntax coloring that for me. It's like, ah, Adam, come on. So we'll save that up and I'll close it and file open, reopen last item. There we go. Now we can properly see the colors there. So we're bringing in create.js and we're bringing in Zim. We will call this one uh, animate asset. Uh, close enough. Shape. And we pop on down here. Uh, let's see what this is giving us right away. So we're going to open up in browser. If you're in Atom, that's a plugin, open in browser plugin that uh, allows me to do that. Or you can just put, you know, drop the file onto a browser. So there's what the 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 default template for Zim is giving us. So forgive me if you if you've never seen Zim before. Then you know, obviously I went through this quickly, but. Uh, there's lots of other videos that you can look at that describe what the template is doing, but we're bringing in two scripts there. We're doing some scaling. We're making it fit and uh, giving it dimensions. We're bringing in a frame and we're ready now with a stage width and a stage height. There's some notes, but you don't uh, need to see the notes. Well, if you're new to Zim, you might want to see those notes. Put your code here. So we want to make a new shape. We will give it a fill, dot fill. What color do we want? Red. How about a red windy rectangle? We could give it a stroke too if we want, but for now we won't. And then a dot path. So here's where we, oh, <laughs> where we paste in the old template again. So now we go off and get the path. So you see how that was a dot P there for, I suppose, a path. I can't remember what that hotkey or what the uh, little tiny API stands for. These are also available in big ones like fill. But 
you cannot use the big ones right on the shape. At that point, you would have to use the graphics property of the shape, much like CreateJS did here. See, we made a shape, that's a CreateJS shape, and we then use the graphics property of the shape to fill and stroke. Well, as of a couple zims ago, we said, all right, I've had enough of using this graphics property. Let's get rid of that. And as long as you use the tiny API, which we use all the time, uh, then you can chain those tiny APIs directly onto a zim shape. This is a CreateJS shape. The zim shape extends a CreateJS shape, so it has everything that CreateJS shape has, but it also has these things right on the shape. <laughs> so there we go. So that's us filling right on our shape object. Here's us adding the path right on the thing, but we need to see this dot center, for instance. So that's us centering it on the stage. So we drag it, dot drag. And let's have a look. We open in browser. And there it is, and we're dragging it around. Pretty cool, huh? So that's how you can bring in an asset with this magical uh, path right here. Now, there are some things that this asset uh, won't have, or this shape doesn't have. It doesn't have bounds. So if we were to try and position this, for instance, a distance from the bottom right-hand corner, it wouldn't it wouldn't work properly. So here we go. We're going to pose, and we will say, how about uh, position it 50 by 50 from the right hand side, bottom, and let's have a look. Let me refresh here. It might look like it's working, but what it's doing is it's positioning wherever it thinks the registration point of this is, and we don't actually know that. It's trying to position. Um, the registration point uh, has basically this thing has a width and height of zero and zero, so it's putting that 50 and 50. So my guess is it's in the center and it's putting it 50 50 from there. That's not what is supposed to happen when you position something from the bottom right. Let's uh, take a look and see in this explore what is supposed to happen. New rectangle dot, and then we can take that and put it there and comment this out. Here's what it's supposed to look like. 50, 50. So this, the edge of the shape is supposed to be 50 pixels and 50 pixels from the edge there. So basically, this shape, uh, by the way, there is a, a, such a thing as a dot outline. So we can dot outline like so. And that shows us w where the bounding box is. So this red rectangle is um, the bounding box. I'm sorry, that's small for you. This is the registration point and the origin there. That's the bounding box. If we tried to do that on the shape, we're going to get a message saying this shape needs bounds. So dot outline, like so. It's going to say in the console that we don't have bounds set on this shape. So it does that. That's where it thinks it is. Uh, and if we go F12 here to see the console, oh, it didn't give us a warning. So, okay, it's basically just, it has, it has bounds, but the bounds are, there's no box. You see how there's no box there? It means that they're, it's, it's kind of like right there in the middle. So uh, that's sucky. That's what it put at 50-50. We could give it bounds like this. If we go something like 100, one second, 100 comma 100. Something's using my processing power. <laughs> there we go. 100, 100, and we refresh here. Now it's 100, 100, but look at where it's, uh, it's placing it. The zero, zero of this shape is right there. So the 100, 100 looks like it's coming from the center. So that's one thing to note when a shape is made, the origin of that shape in CreateJS is in the center of the original shape. So that can be a little bit tricky. Uh, the original shape, that's where zero, zero is. If we start stretching things around it, then um, you know uh, we're stretching it out from that original location. 
So if we want things, if we want the shape to kind of position properly, if, if we were trying to position it 50-50 from the edge, we would want to make sure that we get bounds around it because maybe we want to position it 50-50 from the left. Uh, and that would just be here from the left and that won't position very well there either, will it? So wherever the bounds are of this thing, that's what's being placed 50-50 from the edge. So it's a good idea sometimes to have this shape have the proper bounds. It also will come into play with things like hit tests. Hit tests will test to see if the bounds are hitting first and then check against various points if needed. So how would we get the right, the right bounds? Well, we could eyeball it. First of all, when we put in the width and the height of the shape there, we have an option. We can, if we put in only two numbers, it's the width and height. If we put in more numbers, um, like 0, 0, this this wouldn't change anything because this means start at an x and y of 0 and 0 and then do a width and a height. Well, 0 and 0 are the defaults. But if we put something like um, minus uh, 50 in here and minus 50, that means start minus 50 from the origin and minus 50 in the y from the origin and then have a width and height of 100 and 100. So let's see how that is affecting what we're drawing. Oh, let's animate. Fresh here. That's getting closer, isn't it? So you can see how our bounds are approaching the right way and we just add some more. Now another thing that you can do is go into the animate results which is here and they uh, do a transform that is what is positioning it to the location on the stage back in animate which is here. So sometimes when I export if if I want these numbers to make a bit more sense I try and put the center of the shape right at zero zero and then it all seems to work out a little bit better. So those numbers are, are how far this is being transformed to get to here. And then there's a width and a height as well that is there. And that's right down here. This is a nominal bounds rectangle. But look, it's kind of right, I guess. But it might be, I don't know if that was the original rectangle's width and height or exactly you know, what's happening. Maybe this the combination of this transform and this location and the width and the height <laughs> is all coming into place. Look, Adobe, what the heck are you doing? You know, I like I work with this stuff all the time, and it took me about a cup, like it took me about an hour to try and figure out what these numbers are trying to do. And I did it at one point, and it might be in a past video, but I'm not going to bother <laughs> looking at this video for now. So why don't we just um, why don't we just leave it at that? We 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 could obviously where am I going here? We could adjust this a bit like 150 and I can't remember what it was looking at and we might want 75 there or something and we're you know it just takes a moment to get the bounds to be roughly what we want there okay so that would be my recommendations on bringing in shapes in general it's pretty good if you do want to make sure that you've got the bound set uh, shapes do not come with their own bounds it's too complicated in theory to calculate those things dynamically now these things were calculated somehow at some point you know and I, I don't know if I quite understand why we couldn't get bounds on a shape but uh, that was it was thought that doing that dynamically was too much processing when you could do it yourself visually as you make the shape so if you're making the shape just hey you know figure out how big it is put your own bounds in there and that in a sense is is what we're doing at this point now in this explore i also wanted to show you um how we could draw a windy rectangle ourselves uh, in zim and with a couple advantages and a couple i mean a, and a disadvantage this thing right here let's get rid of that outline whoop and we could animate that and, and make it the background of a button or anything anything we wanted. But there it is. That's that's the shape. Uh, this thing is a, a vector. If we cached it, it would be then a bitmap, and it would have all of the performance of the bitmap that 
uh, Adobe Animate exported in the first place. So just a dot cache. That's another thing though. <laughs> just, just realized. Dot cache, watch what happens. Cache by default uses the bounds to figure out how big to cache. So <laughs> there it is. So those are the bounds and that's the cached uh, version of this shape is snipped off the edges because our bounds weren't right. You can, if you want, supply prop, uh, more bounds to here. Like we could say zero comma zero comma stage width. It'd be interesting to see what happens here. Stage height. Now I think that that is from the zero zero. So we're still going to cut off stuff on the left hand side, but we won't cut off anything on the right hand side. So we refresh here. So look, it's starting at zero zero, which is the center of the shape and then going the uh, the whole stage that way. So if we want to make sure that we actually cache the left hand top side, we'd have to go minus and we could divide those things by two, I guess. But uh, this is obviously caching too big a shape. So this would make a bitmap, I think, would make a bitmap very, very big, but at least it would, oh, would it go the right? No, nope. we'd have to go times two here. So why don't we divide this by two? So if we, <laughs> <laughs> if we just left it like that, if we went minus stage width, minus stage height, and then a width of stage width and stage height, we'd end up collecting the top left-hand corner of the shape and not any, not any more of that. So now we're going half the stage width one way, half the stage width the other way, and then a width and height of the stage width will cache this whole thing. Oh, what fun with caching. There it is, all cached. That's now a bitmap, and you would get the same performance as a bitmap rather than dragging around a vector. See, every time we drag around a vector, it has to recalculate that vector. Now, usually that's not a problem, but if you've got a complicated looking vector, that's a lot of calculations to be redrawing every time we, uh, we drag. So if you then cache that, that's caching an image, that's, that's coming from the GPU. And even if that's very, very complicated, it will be the same as if it were a very simple, <laughs> you know, uh, image. It wouldn't make a difference. All right, so uh, where were we? That that's a bit on caching. So one of the advantages of having a vector is, well, first of all, it's it's vector crisp and it's um, it can be cached like that. Well, uh, so could a blob, but and the blob is also vector crisp. The blob has extra um, extra stuff added to it, so it, it, which can be good, but if you only need a shape, then it'd be better just to use a shape rather than a blob. Otherwise, we're calculating various um, things along with that blob. Mind you, if you cache a blob, there wouldn't be any difference. So the idea is I want to show you a blob now. Woohoo! On this explore. <laughs> Who would have thought this explore could go on for so long? You still with me? All right, well, this is what a blob looks like. New blob, not a blog. If I've been blobbing, blogging. <laughs> if I've been blogging, new blog dot center. All right, let's have a look. There it is, and these are these extra things that that come along with a blob. So. If you were to make that windy shape with a blob like this, which we can do, do you see uh, if I'm double clicking these to get the different type of points. So we're, we're almost going to start with our rectangle. I didn't really mean to be, we, we've got to do this all again if we're going to record it. So maybe I shouldn't bother. Uh, but now we have to find out how to be able to record this. I can't just drag the edge of the line, but what I can do is go and get a different type of stick. So one of these sticks, those two match there, this one right here. This is the stick that I want to be able to give us the windy rectangle look. <laughs> All right, let's see how we're already approaching the windy rectangle look or the end of a canoe look. <laughs> I'm not sure which one. <laughs> enter the canoe. <laughs> bum, 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 All right, well, that uh, we, let's carry on with that in just a bit because we have to have a way to be able to record that. So we could record it right in here on some sort of action. We could say blob.record points. Um, do you wanna, do you wanna do that? I suppose we could. Let's make it a color. So color colon blue, like so. 
and we're centering it and we'll give this a name var blob is equal to a new blob dot center and then we can say something like mm, what's a, what's a good one we could get a key down all right so frame dot on and a uh, key down call this function right here now we could find out the key code for that key down if we wanted to by asking for the e dot key code there but just any key down will record the blob that's probably good enough and for that we say blob dot record points like so and I put a true in there and that will pop up a nice window for us that we can just copy the points. All right, so we save that. Open in browser. I think I already had one of them open in browser. Here's <clears throat> there it is. Now let's just do a test before we go too far. And I'll press a key, L. And there are the points of the blob. All right, so if I were to copy those, hello. It's gonna make, it's gonna make that lovely blob. <laughs> we come in here, we go comma points colon and paste, and there's the points in the blob. So now when I refresh, there it is. It's the lovely blob. <laughs> so we could just make a windy day out of that. And do I do I have to? Uh, okay, we're we're going to the the yellow on this. So let's see. We want a yellow and. It helps if you do the sound effects when you do your windy, windy rectangle. Ah. And whoosh. You know what I could have done? I, I just realized is uh, you can multi-select these points and probably done all of those whooshes together. Anyway, good enough whoosh, wouldn't you say? So what do we have to do? We have to key down and we grab these things. We copy that. It's not a very nice selection color, is it? And come back into here and we change these points. Boom, boom, like so. We don't need the key down anymore. There we go. So a blob, a new blob with a color and we can change the color in the stroke and all that. If we don't want it interactive, we can say interactive colon false like that. And then here are the points. So we refresh here and there it is. We've got this interactive blob and we can't, uh, can't, or we, I mean, sorry, we have this uninteractive blob and we've got our windy thing. If we wanted to drag that, we can then say drag, like so. Same as before. Now, setting up the record points is a little, little bit annoying. I mean, it's not too bad. But what we did make is on the Zim site here, under examples, look for the neo so zim neo is when we were doing well okay that that's one way of doing it probably a better way would be under the code uh, is this where it was um, let's see yeah under the code there's a library called pizzazz or there's uh, so down under the libraries we've got socket game physics 3js and then we've got these pizzazz things so one of them is paths right here so we press on that, it gets us directly to this recorder where we can find out the code for that one and we can do some adjustments to it. So we could move it over if we, if we needed to. And there's also a menu of different blob uh, shapes like that and also a menu of different squiggle shapes. <laughs> and you can see the code for that squiggle and here's the code for Batman like that. And you can set the fill on that. Like I just, this doesn't have a fill, but you can set the fill. So that's the code for, for Batman. So if we copy this code, copy, and come back into our blob code right here, and 
instead of those points, we paste in the Batman points. So there's the Batman points. And we open in browser. We have the Batman. All right. Are you really, really, really happy? I mean, if you've made it this far, uh, I think you'd be happy, happy, happy. You'd be welcome to come and join us at zimjs.com slash slack. And that's where we uh, talk about things. If you have any questions, want to show us some examples, just uh, hang out with us. We would love to see you there. And this has been a Zim Explore. And I am Dr. Abstract. We've taken a look at how to use Adobe Animate to bring in a vector shape. There's also Zim Shim, which works with Adobe Animate in general, and you can check that out as well. Uh, but I think you'll find that you have much of what you need right in Zim itself without using Animate, and I would suggest you start there. If you've been using Animate for a long time, why don't you just come in and try using Zim on its own? You don't have to bring Zim into Animate. That sometimes makes it more complicated. There's lots of uh, good things about Zim. Check out the intro, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Ciao for now. Have a great night or day. Woohoo!